Facebook Live, Facebook Live, we have arrived. One more time, y'all, let's get it in. Conference muted. Conference recording started. I want to thank everybody for chiming in. This is Watchman Derek Yahuda. Israel, also known as Pastor Derek, on the early what I see through Switch on the Empire Line on this first day in February. Hallelujah, 2024. Uh, uh, Yosef, good to see you in here. Ed is in the building, holding it down. Mom is in the building. Uh, bless you as well. Evangela is in the building. Stay encouraged in him. Big sis is in the building. Continue to bless Mike uh, and, his, and his health. Hallelujah, who a tailor in the building. Well, then let the tag games begin then. And we got Barbara in here, faithful Barbara, from day one. Thank the most high for you. Hallelujah. Well, as everyone is chiming in, we're back at it like a fanatic spirit walk part 10. And the theme scripture is Galatians 5, 16 through 18. We're praying that the Most High continue to open up truth uh, that we may see in his realm and uh, enjoy the comfort and the safety in his kingdom, including eternal life. Uh, let's go back to the theme scripture, Galatians 5, 16 through 18. Look what it say. It says, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you're led of the spirit, you are not under the law. You notice, uh, uh, Teresa, how I say, but if you're led of the spirit, you notice the but part, because it just denounced... Um, the flesh, it denounced it, and the contrary to the denouncing of the flesh is walking in the spirit. You denounce the flesh, you get away from your human nature, uh, uh, Teresa, then you can be led by the spirit. But if you're led of the spirit, and if you're led of the spirit, you're not under the law. If you look at this, I say then, walk in the spirit. And you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Um, that that's so key. On Nicole Robinson, if you really understood that, this I say then: walk in the spirit, and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's your deliverance from evil. That's your deliverance from evil. That's the rerouting of your lifestyle. If any man be the Messiah, he's a new uh, creation, a new creature. King James Version says, but he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. What are the old things that have passed away, Banks? Walking in the flesh. Walking according to your evil nature. Walking just to, living just to please this temporary flesh. Because this, this, this flesh is completely temporary. Please believe that. Please understand that that this flesh is completely temporary. Yeah, it came from the dirt and it's returning. Period. It came from the dirt and it is returning. Bottom line. Are you with me? It came it, it came it came from the dirt and it's returning to the dirt. And that's it. Stay with me. Hallelujah. It came from the dirt. Oh, are we still in here? It came from the dirt. And, and, uh oh, I'm not in here. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. I see. I see that. I see it. I'm back, y'all. <laughs> Bree, I see you in here. Bev, I see you. Falcon in the building. I see y'all up in here with us. 
Hallelujah. Look what it say. <clears throat> it say, it say, this I say then, walk in the spirit, and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It don't say, uh, 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 obey the commandments, and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I'm trying to be plain as possible so that a person can understand the true relationship with the Most High is to walk in the spirit of the Most High. Don't nobody know the spirit of the Most High but the Most High. And you can't be closer to the Most High than him baptizing himself, his Ruach, Hakadesh, his spirit inside of you. You can't get closer. What he say, his word, what he say on stone versus what he say, his spirit, being baptized inside of you. Can you see the difference? And if he baptizes his spirit, which is his word, the spirit of his word, inside of you, it leading guides you into all truth. If that happens, I'm trying to be plain, y'all. If that happens, you'll walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Because now you can intimately obey him. You're in a relationship with him. Can y'all see the difference? Can y'all see that? Forget this religious stuff. We got to get a relationship with the creator. Can y'all see that? We're going to start off putting the one up in here. Can y'all see that? The difference between folks running around here, you need to keep the Ten Commandments. I need to obey the creator. And, I, and, and, and it enables me to obey the creator if he baptized his spirit inside of me. If he filled me with his spirit and lead and guide me into all truth. Yeah, he said, I, I'll walk with him. Yeah, I, I'll be in them. I'll be I'll be their Elohim and they'll be my people. Yeah, that that that's it right there. This I say then walk in the spirit. And what's gonna happen? You should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now not only do I have an option. And I can identify my evil thoughts. I can identify my evil ways. Why? Because his spirit is inside of me identifying it. Now, now I can see spiritually, not right and wrong. I can see a righteousness to supersede what man would deem to be right or wrong. There's a righteousness that supersedes right and wrong, uh, 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 Haviv. The, 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 so there's something bigger than what we deem to be right or wrong. That's why the Bible teaches us uh, there's a way to seem right unto a man, but the end thereof is the ways of death. It's something bigger than right or wrong. Are y'all with me? This I say then, listen, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. <laughs> For the flesh, less against the spirit. 17 first, y'all. For the flesh, less against the spirit. Galatians 5 and 17, y'all. For the flesh, less against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one to the other. So you cannot do the things that you would. You notice how Jeff Brown is saying you cannot do the things you would. Do you see how the word is telling us that the things we would do ain't cool? How the word know what we would do ain't cool? Is it true? It's completely true. So that you cannot do the things that you would. How the word know what I would do? That I'd sleep with them. That I'd pop at them. That I'd fight them. That I'd cuss them out. How, how, the, word, how the word know I'd go to the strip club? <sighs> That I for dangle. How the word know that? So that you cannot do the things that you would. Because y'all know what we made out of. Where we come from. And only those that want to get away from themselves. Get away from this evil. Now again, what makes it so difficult? Because death. Is difficult. Death is difficult. Death is evil, it's dark, and it's difficult. 
sin is a byproduct of death or death is the consequence of it. It's ugly. When, 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 we, when we deal with Catholicism and we sitting in church on some padded pews and we listen to the five part harmony band with a band up there singing, smelling some fried chicken, uh, you know, cooking in the fellowship hall. And um, we're hearing about for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And we sitting comfortable. We, we miss the whole thing, especially when we living in sin. But the preacher tell us we all sinners saved by grace and we all going to heaven because of what Jesus did. That is such a misconception of what's really going on. People have been lulled to sleep. People don't understand how deadly it is. The Bible describes where we live as the valley of the shadow of death. Don Deans. The Bible describes where we live as the valley of the shadow of death. But when you turn on the TV, you see a Disneyland. You see Christmas trees. You see this this this. this this European dude with, with with a fake beard and a red suit on, with little with little boys and girls sitting on his lap. You 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 see this fairy tale. You see something that's fictitious, that's misleading. Uh, B J Kemp, false advertisement. You you want to know what life is really about? People are evil. There's wars and rumors of war. They traffic in children. People are sick. You see a big old buff dude with a beard and a little wig on with a little purse and some pumps. Six foot, 365 pounds. People are sick. That's sick. But it's painted to be right. You sick if you think it's sick. This place is dark, it's sick, and it's evil. And when you uh, the type of person that will preach and teach a uh, true Frank, your life is in danger. Because this place is dark and it's sick. This ain't no game. Somebody posted on my, my page, Monroe. Now, Monroe was a good preacher. He was a good teacher. But I knew him to be more Catholicized in his theological position. He had a lot of good books, real anointed man, real good teacher. And they posted something on my page that I never heard him say before in my life. I always wondered why his plane went down. He was a very successful a brother, teacher, educated, his family was tight, good husband, you know, in fact, his, his wife was on the plane with him when it went down. But I always wondered what I, I knew he was a good, powerful preacher, very influential. But I, I was wondering, why did his plane go down? I just think that. And what that man was preaching, there was a little clip that somebody sent me. It's on my page right now. Y'all go check it out. Monroe is the preacher's name. But he was preaching who the Romans are and a different sex of the Romans. And he was preaching how they brought Jesus to us and and how they colonized us and not how they believed that they were ordained by the gods to get the black folks this, with kinky hair, dark skin, and, you know, big lips. And how the God said that there are there are, are, are there are are servants. You saw that Jeff Brown, but but that the the, the, the Europeans believe the Romans believe uh, that um, you know you know um, they're 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 born to to cook for our children and build our houses and be enslaved and work for us. Now. I understood what he was saying, including the geographical areas that he was pointing out. Because I understand that 
after 70 AD, it, it went around, started with the Portuguese, but at the, after 70 AD, when the true Hebrews was on the run, Dante Rogers, they was on the run, uh, uh, the, the, the word was the cursed of Yahuwah. He used the term, the cursed of the gods, which is exactly the same thing. They were saying that, that these people are cursed of the gods, and now they are, they, they're, they're, they're ordained to be our slaves. And um, and so they, they, they took that mindset and they've been dogging us out ever since. It's the spirit of Esau. It's the spirit of Esau. I'm not going to teach that too heavy right now. But it's the spirit of Esau that always was upset with Jacob because he sold his birthright to him. And he was determined to get it back. Because Esau is Rome too. Just so you know. But with that being said, the world conspired to enslave these people and dog them out. And that's why the darker you are, the more uh, they look down on you. It's, it's all orchestrated. It's all orchestrated. It's all orchestrated. Back to my point. This is an evil place. They don't like Yah, his children, or Yah's ways. These people got a problem with the Most High and his children. <laughs> Those of us that belong to Yah understand the fact that the wages of sin is death. And that's what we're experiencing on earth. The valley of the shadow of death. Get a clue. The valley of the shadow of death. This is not a place to where you get things fixed naturally. You need natural things. But... You're trying to fix things naturally when you need to be fixed spiritually. Can, can you imagine a, a pedophile finally got his finances together? Her finances together? Because <laughs> that's what he or she was interested in. Somebody slang more dope than the law allowed. Finally, bought that mansion they wanted. Can you see it? We as people, we as people, I've been striving. I've been having some some challenges, you know, personally, financially, whatever. You know what I mean? I'm I'm fine. I'm not complaining at all. But I say that to say, I am so busy trying to. Submit to Yah so he can continue to work on my character, my spiritual relationship with him. I finally figured it out. When you get older, you start figuring some things out. Especially when you get more mature in Yah. You start figuring out that you're not going to be here forever. It's the truth. You're not going to be here forever. And whatever spiritual flaws we have... Our main priority should be getting our, our, our spiritual lives in order. Is y'all with me? Is y'all with me? You with me, Taylor? I see that, absolutely. You with me? You, you want to get your... You don't want to be a liar. You don't want to be a hustler. You don't want to be a thief. You don't, you don't want to be a calm person. You, you don't want to be sexually perverted. Men with men, women with women... You, you don't want to, you don't, come on, y'all. You, you want to get, you want to get your life together. Spiritually. First. He did say first seek the kingdom of, of Yah and his righteousness and all this other stuff be added. He understand the other stuff, but we be putting the cart before the horse. Galatians 5, 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit. And you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the for the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one uh, 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 to the other. So you cannot do the things that you would. The the word was right. At least it was when it was talking about me. I can't do what I want to do. It changed my whole life. Me not doing what I want to do. 
I'm not even the same dude. Because I don't do what I want to do. I ain't better than nobody. I ain't going to play that game. I'm concentrating on not doing what I want to do. Because if I don't do what I want to do, and I'm led of the Spirit, I'm not under the law. And that's what we was dealing with. So let's look back at that. If we led by the Spirit... We're not under the law. Let's pick it back up at 2 Corinthians 3 and 11. Watch this. Look what it read. It says, For if that which is done away was glorious, what is it talking about? I'm telling you right now, it's talking about the Ten Commandments. The same Ten Commandments that our brothers and sisters are swearing, you got to keep. Should I believe them or the word? I love them. But they need to wake their spiritual game up. They kind of like misleading people. Come on, y'all. Look what he said. <clears throat> For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glory. What remains? Walking in the spirit. The, the new covenant that he said he was going to enter into, according to Jeremiah 31, 31 through 33. The new covenant he said he was going to enter into with his children is glorious. 12 verse says, seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. I'm not stuttering. Well, maybe a little bit, but I'm not trying to. I'm not stuttering, y'all. Seeing then that we had this hope, we use great plainness of speech. Not as Moshe or Moses, okay. Not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look at the end of that which is abolished. It's abolished. It's abolished, y'all. But their minds were blinded. Listen, but their minds were blinded for unto this day remains the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in the Messiah. It's done away in the Messiah. One of my brothers, he, he posted, he said he understands what the end of the law, uh, 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 of the Messiah being the end of the law, what that means. And he don't mean it, it. It means the end of the law. So I just, I just listen what he told me. Listen to the scriptures he quote, and I just feel for him because I be trying to talk to him. He don't listen. He teaches me, so I just listen. I try. I'll try again. Prayerfully, he'll hear this lesson. I don't know. Maybe I send it to him. But he got a lot of explaining to do, and he can't. Because what he teaching ain't true. But look what it say. But their minds were blinded. Because their minds be blinded. For unto this day remaineth the same veil. Untaken away in the reading of Torah. Folks going back in Torah. Trying to find salvation. Trying to go back under the law. Which veil is done away in the Messiah. Now, if you really want to read the word right, you'll find out that you're more righteous having this word in you on the tables of your heart than on stone. But they don't understand that. I wish they did. Fourteen first. But their minds were blinded. For unto this day remain the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in the Messiah. But even unto this day, when Moshe is read, the veil is upon their hearts. When Torah is read, there's a veil. They don't get it. They see it carnally. They, they can't pass through. You got to get through the veil, y'all. You got to get that veil off, off your heart. 
16 verse. Nevertheless, when it shall turn uh, to Yahuwah, the veil shall be taken away. When you turn to Yahushua, the veil is removed. You, you're free. Whom Yahushua, Yahushua has set free is free indeed. It's a freedom. The, your relationship with the Most High switched from a religious standpoint to pure relationship. And then you learn to cast your cares upon him knowing that he cared. You're not fighting to survive. You're more fighting the good fight of faith. You're fighting to be spiritually alive. When, when, when we're delivered from religion, your whole perspective um, change. It'd be like, have you ever felt like when you pray, like your prayers are not going nowhere? There's something going on in your conscience that's not good, and you got to get it right with Yah. Because when you get it right, that veil leaves. There's a veil. It's a spiritual, invisible veil that makes you feel like your, your, your prayers don't go past the ceiling. Like he's not listening to you. But when your conscience is clear towards him because you have good intentions towards him, you're not harboring evil in, in your heart. I'm not saying evil thoughts won't come, but when you accept the thoughts, give them refuge, you harbor them, they're welcomed, then the veil is there. You blocked off from the most high. He's not messing with you. That's why he said, if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither, neither will your heavenly father forgive you yours. I'm just trying to tell you something. The only thing you can do is become religious, having a form of yawliness, but deny the power thereof. We got, we got to be, we got to be clear. We, we got to get away from uh, our, our carnality, including religion. We got to have faith and belief in our creator. And we got to trust him. Then we can cast our cares upon him, knowing that he care. Because the airways is clear. You want to be clear. You don't want to. You don't have no no in your heart towards Yah. Because if you do, it stunts your growth. Fourteen verse. But their minds were blinded. For unto this day remained the same veil, untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. Which veil is done away in the Messiah. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the first of five books of the Bible, y'all. When Moshe is read, the veil is upon their hearts. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Messiah, when it shall turn to Yahushua, our Adonai. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to Yahuwah, the veil shall be taken away. Y'all see that? Now, Yahush, now, now, Yahuwah is that spirit. And where the spirit of Yahuwah is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of Yahuwah, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of Yahuwah. So what changes us into his image, y'all, What changes us uh, into his image is his spirit, his word. It changes us into his image. It transforms us by the renewing of our mind. Put a one in here if y'all getting this. Let me show you some more. Hebrews 8, 1. I want to read this in the NIV so y'all can really get a better understanding. Is that fair? Let's do it like that. I'm going to go to the NIV. I really want y'all to understand this. Let's do it. I see the ones coming in. Brooke, y'all. And I know those on the conference line, they got their ones in their heart. But look at this. Look what it say. When people be on YouTube, they be putting ones, twos, and stuff, and I smile. Anyway, let's do it. Look what to say, y'all. Hebrews 8 and 1, NIV. Now, the main point of what we are saying is this. 
we do have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens and who serve in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle set up by Yahuwah, not by mere human beings. Okay, what he's saying is talking about the spiritual priesthood, which is the Messiah, and it's talking about the true tabernacle, which is in heaven. The children of Israel had a tabernacle in the wilderness on earth, but it was made at the pattern of the tabernacle, which is in heaven. And when Moshe, Moses was in the Mount, Mount Sinai in the wilderness, the Most High was giving him the blueprint of the tabernacle, the true tabernacle, which is in heaven. If you know anything about the tabernacle, you know that it's made in the fashion that's supposed to represent the body of the Messiah. How deep is that? The, the, the true tabernacle that was in heaven is like the body of the Messiah because that's exactly what it represents. Are y'all with me? That's kind of getting deep, but I'm just telling you that the tabernacle that was made on earth is sim symbolism of the tabernacle, the body of the Messiah in heaven. I'm just trying to tell you something. Watch this. I'm going to read it again. Now, the main point of what we're saying is this. We do have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand in the throne of the majesty in heaven. And y'all know the right hand is the most high is a spirit. He don't have a right hand. So the right hand is, is talking about authority. This is like my right hand man. That's symbolic language of strength, power. It's a position, the right hand. I'm just telling you, I'm trying to teach you. Pray. Anyway, now the main point which we are saying is this. We do have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand on the throne of the majesty in heaven and who serves in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle set up by Yahuwah, not by a mere human hands because the tabernacle on earth was made by people. Third verse. Every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. And so it was necessary for this one also to have uh, something to offer. If he were on earth, he would not be a priest for there are already priests who offer of uh, the gifts prescribed by the law. They serve at a sanctuary that is a copy. This is what I was trying to tell you. Fifth verse. They serve at a sanctuary that is a copy and shadow of what is in heaven. So the real tabernacle was in heaven. And he, he gave that to Moses in the mount so that they could make a physical one made by human hands on earth. Joshana, I see you in here. Are y'all with me? Uh, Hebrews 8 and 5. They serve at a sanctuary that is a copy and shadow of that which is in heaven. This is why Moshe was warned when he was about to build the tabernacle. See, the Most High warned him. See to it that you make everything according to the pattern showed you on the mount. So the Most High showed him the pattern of the true tabernacle, which was in heaven, when he was on the mount when he was in mount when he was in mount sinai are, are you with me right six verse but in the fact that the ministry yahusha has received is a superior to theirs as the covenant of which he is a mediator and is superior to the old one now here we go with this new and old that, that i've been teaching on in this lesson right but in the fact that the ministry of Yahusha has received is as superior to theirs as the covenant of which he is the mediator is superior to the old one uh, since the new covenant is established on better promises. Did y'all hear that? The new covenant is established 
on better covenant. The new one that we talked about in Jeremiah 31, 31 uh, through 33, the new covenant is a better one because the new covenant is you're walking in the spirit. The old covenant, you got, you got, you got, you got his commands on stone. Well, he's removing the stone in the new so that the word could be written on the tables of our heart. Are y'all with me? So the seventh verse then says, for if there had been nothing wrong with the first covenant, that's Torah. That's the first covenant that he entered into with the children of Israel at Mount Sinai. For if there had been nothing wrong with the first covenant, no place would have been sought for another. There was fault with it. Delisa, there, there was fault. What, what was the fault with the, with, with, with the new covenant? The word was on stone. And they didn't keep it. Because the word was on stone. Because the stone represents our stony hard heads. The stony hard head human beings. His word on it caused the whole world to be guilty before him because they couldn't keep it. And they end up being scattered across the four corners of the earth and they end up being enslaved, losing their identity. They end up being slaves, thinking they're Gentiles as a way of punishment that was prophesied in the Bible. Why? Because they were given the oracles of Yah that was written on stone and they couldn't keep it. So there was a necessity of a second one. That's why in Jeremiah 31 through 31 said he was going to enter into a new covenant with the children of Israel and the house of Judah. Not with, as the covenant that he made with the forefathers when he took them by the hand and brought them out of the land of e Egypt. But he said, this is the new covenant that I will make with them. I will, I will take my word, my commandments, and I will write it on the tables of their hearts. Because at first it was on the tables of stone. I'll be the Elohim and it shall be my people. Are y'all with me? So Hebrews 8 and 7, for if it had been nothing wrong with the first covenant, is something wrong with the word? No. There was something wrong with the uh, stone that the word was on. I keep telling y'all, uh, Romans 8 and 3, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, Yah sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. That the righteousness of the law. What's the righteousness of the law? His word might be fulfilled in us. What do we need to be fulfilled in us? The word. We don't need the word on stone. We need the word in our hearts so we can obey him. Oh, y'all, come on now. We don't need to have a form of yachtiness denying the power of that church crap. Bunch of fornicating, adultery committing, drunk high strip club frequenting religious people. That'll cuss you out. That'll stab you in the back. That'll sleep with your spouse. That'll blow your brains out. You don't need that. For if there's seven verse, y'all. For if there had been a nothing wrong with the first commandment, no place would have been sought for the other, for another. But y'all found fault with the people. I did not tell y'all wasn't his word that was the problem. It wasn't the Ten Commandments that the problem. He found fault with the people and said, the days are coming, declare Yahuwah, that I will make a new covenant. Listen, listen what they say. That I'll make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. Is you listening? He said, I will make a new covenant with them. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors or the forefathers when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt. Didn't I just quote that? Jeremiah 31, 31 through 33. Because they did not remain faithful to my covenant, and I turned away from them. Because they broke my covenant, I turned away from them. Declare of Yahuwah. Look what the tip first say. This is the covenant that I will establish with the people of Israel after that time, declare of Yahuwah. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be the Elohim, and they will be my people. Didn't I just quote that? 
11 verse. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, know Yahuwah, because they all will know me. From the least of them to the greatest. I didn't say uh, Jeremiah 33, 30, uh, 31 through 33. Uh, I mean, I, that's what I said. I, I could have said Jeremiah 31, uh, uh, 31 through 34, because he just quoted the 34. Um, normally, you would go to 34. I just didn't quote this part, but it's all good. We just read it. That's the 34th verse in Jeremiah. It's the, it's the 11th verse. In Hebrews 8. Are y'all with me? 12th verse then says, For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. By calling the covenant new, it has made the first obsolete. Did y'all hear that? By calling the covenant new, he has made the first obsolete. Did y'all hear that? By calling the covenant new, he has made the first obsolete. Did y'all hear that? And what is op, uh, obsolete and outdated will soon disappear. Did y'all hear that? I'm going to read it in the KJV. I'm going to start the 12th verse. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and the iniquities will I remember no more. In that he saith, a new covenant, he hath made the first old, and now that which decayeth and waxes old is ready to vanish away. It's gone, y'all. It vanished. Now we got we got the Ruah, his spirit living inside of us, leading guidance and all truth. Um, oh, we we dealing with it. We dealing with it now. Back to the theme scripture, Galatians five, sixteen. Let's see if we get a better understanding now. Let's just keep pulling on it. Galatians five sixteen. This spirit walk part ten, y'all. Look at it. Look what it say. Galatians five sixteen. This I say then, walk in the spirit, not the commandments. Not keep the commandments. Listen. This I say then, walk in the spirit. This is the new. The old is decaying. The old is vanishing away. Look what it say. This I say, walk in the spirit. What is the spirit? The spirit is his word that was on stone. We, he ain't never said go against my word, ever, and he never will. The word has gone out of his mouth and will not return void, but will accomplish what he please. Well, what does he please his word to do? Save those that believe the word. <laughs> Save the believer. For Yah so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hey, the believer obey him. Listen, this I say then, walk in the spirit, and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If, if, if you're walking in the spirit of Yah, you're not going to do your evil nature. If you're not walking in the spirit, you bear watching. You can't be trusted. If you're not walking the spirit, ain't no telling how it's going to go down in the town. <laughs> On some real talk. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Anybody want to be delivered from your evil nature? We all got action at it. Are y'all with me? This I say then, let the tag games begin then, Haviv. I see you in there tagging. That's how you do it. Galatians 5 and 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Oh, you just trying to get away from the law because you want to live lawless. You can't get no better than obeying Yah uh, 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 than walking in the spirit. Ten Commandments ain't going to make you live better than somebody that's walking in the spirit. Because the spirit is the word that was on the commandments. And abundant. You talk about Ten Commandments. Everything he says is a command. If he tell you to come here, if he told you to sit down, if he told you to stop talking right now, be quiet. That's a commandment. So when folks see the word talking about keep my commandments, they go right back to the veil that's done away in the Messiah. But it ain't done away for them. Anytime you read Torah, the veil is back over their eyes, back over their heart. 
Galatians 5 and 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one to another, so you cannot do the things you would. Why can't you do the things you would? Because you're led by the spirit. You're obeying Yah. You're led by his word. You obey his word. But you need to do this. Man, be quiet. You don't even know what the heck you're talking about. And that's what First Timothy, First Timothy one and seven is trying to tell you. you. Want to be teachers of the law and don't know what the heck they talking about. And then you got folks hollering, "Amen" or "All man or "Aman," and they don't know what they talking about. They agree with something they don't even know what the heck they talking about. And it went on to say, "For for for the law was not made for a righteous man, and if you live by a spirit, you you become the righteousness of Yah." We read that too. <laughs> Talk back to me. We need to, we need to be reconciled with the Spirit. That's our only way out. The way of sin is death. We're in the valley of the shadow of death. This place is coming to a close, and those that live for this place is in for a rude awakening. These communist jokers, these these new world world jokers. Got an agenda 2030. They plan on locking this joker down within the next six years. Within the next six years, by 2030, all freedom they plan to be gone. Digital currency. Everybody going to have to get the mark in order to be able to buy and sell. If you survive, because they plan to poison everybody. They've been hitting chemtrails. You see all the stuff they're doing to the food. The food is fake. Ain't no nutrition in it. They didn't tow up the soil. They didn't tow this world up. Larry Van. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't nuke this joker. They letting out, they, they got the CERN letting out demonic force. They trying to free, free the, 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 the angels that's uh, 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 been uh, in chains of darkness over there in Switzerland. They doing all kind of stuff. Just devils. They don't like people. They hijack uh, 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 Yaakov. They 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 want this. Esau Ben want to take his identity back. Uh huh. The one he sold for some blood soup, for a bowl of soup, he sold his birthright. He been trying to get it back. He hate Yah. He hate his children. He been trying to get it back, and and he was blessed by uh uh uh, uh his dad, right? He was blessed by his dad to. To uh, 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 to to rule the world with the sword, and everything he was gonna gain, he was gonna do it through the sword. Are y'all with me? And that's what he's been doing until he's destroyed. He's been fighting against Yah and his children, and he didn't hijack the world and methodology through the Roman Catholic Church, methodology through the Romans, methodology through the through 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 the Muslims to be one hundred Ishmael through methodology he he didn't wreck the world he didn't married and he didn't he didn't he didn't morphed and 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 and, and slept with and had children from yeah the powers to be that's how he do it he morph into and take over he morph into other cultures and take over. And it's the spirit of Esau. That's why in the Apocrypha, 2nd Exodus 6 and 9 says that Esau is the end of the world. But Yaakov is the beginning of that which follows. Because the Most High is going to bring Esau's reign to an end. As we enter into the millennial reign for a thousand years. After the thousand years, then he gonna tear up it. Most high gonna really demolish him, and that's gonna be it. This I say then, I'm, I'm gonna get out of here, y'all. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You don't say uh, walk in the commandments. Walk in the spirit. Everything y'all say is a command. It ain't just 10. It ain't just the 613. 
This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one to another. So you cannot do the things you, we are all capable of doing some stuff. Those of us that's delivering from ourselves, congratulations. Those of us that's going to hold on to the end, if, 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 you, if, you're, if, if you're striving and fighting to be delivered from yourself, put a one in here. Put a one in here. If, you, if you're willing to walk away from your evil nature and your goal is to follow Yah, put a one in here. If you're denouncing your sinful nature, that's what you're supposed to do when you first got saved. If there's any uh, believers in here or anyone that want to be a believer, first thing you got to do is believe that the word became flesh and dwelt among us and that he lived a perfect example for us and then died on that tree for our sins and rose again, defeating death because he never sinned. And now he's willing to baptize himself inside of you. That same spirit is willing to live inside of you and lead and guide you in all truth. If you believe that and you want it, all I'm saying is put a one in here. Put a two in here if you understand the fact that you got to walk away from sin. You got to personally denounce it and receive the word as master of your life. Because the word is Yah. In the beginning was the word. The word was with Yah and the word was Yah. The same what? The same what? Word was in the beginning with Yah. All things was made by him. And if you're going to be remade, it's going to be by his word. How many of y'all willing to bow down to his word? How many of y'all willing to bow down to his word? Did y'all know in order to bow down to his word, you have to denounce your nature? Put a three in here if you understand and willing to denounce your nature. What it look like, what it smell like, what it tastes like, what it sound like, what it feel like to you. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. I'm going to obey Yah, period. First seek the kingdom of Yah and his righteousness. All this other stuff is secondary. It'll be added. He'll give you what you need. He'll meet your needs. He might not meet your lust. He might not meet your desires, but he'll give you what you need. He know what you need. You need to change. You need to repent. You chasing the wrong stuff. He be keeping us on a hamster wheel. You ain't gonna you ain't gonna get it if he love you. You ain't gonna get it until you get it. Did y'all understand what I said? You ain't gonna get it until you get it. You ain't gonna get what you're striving for until you get it. You need him. First seek the kingdom of Yah. We be needing a hunger and thirst after righteousness. Talk back to me. I see you in here, Reed. Pull up a cheer. We in here. Stay with me. So you know we got to deny ourselves in order to receive him as master of our life, right? That's, that's real talk. How many of y'all want to do better? Want to do, want to grow in him? Want to do better? Put a foe in here. Want to do better? You know you can do better. Put a foe in here if you can do better. But you want to. You want to be delivered from anything that's trying to stop you from walking in the Ruah, walking in the Spirit, obeying Him 100%. Put a foe in here. If you have a desire, I want to even get closer to Him. I want to get closer to Him. I want to love Him even more. I want to walk in the Spirit of selflessness. I want to, I want to denounce my evil nature 100%. I want to be delivered from lust and lying and lasciviousness and, and hatred and grudges and, and chasing a bag over Yah. I, I don't want to, I want to do stuff to get money that he is displeased with. Everything I do, I want to do for him. Put a foe in here if that's your desire. Come on, foe in some more. I got foe on it. I don't want to do nothing. I don't want to make no money. I don't want to. I don't. I don't. I don't even want to hang with folks that don't don't that, that don't love him like that. Real talk. If I do hang with you, I'm trying to get you there. If I hang with you, I'm trying to get you there. On my personal time, I, man, I want to. Man, I want to be able to let my hair down for the lack of a better term. Relax and be comfortable around some folks that love y'all. Because if they love y'all, they love me. They will love my family. Come on, talk back to me. So always need to come out from among them and be separate. Y'all put a foe in here. You can't do it without y'all. You can't do it without y'all. We need, we need to pray. We need to pray. Nola Rembrandt uh, uh, lost her, her daughter. And we're going to pray about that too. 
She just lost her daughter. She lost her son, and, and she lost, now, now she lost her daughter. That's a lot. But we're going to pray. We're going to pray about that. Too. We're going to pray for our souls, getting closer, and we're going to pray for Nola. Nolia is really how you say it, but put five on it. Let's pray. We need, we need to get our houses in order. Everybody want to put five on it. Everybody want to put five on it. Let's pray. Let's pray. Right now. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Spirit, living Elohim, we love you and thank you for this opportunity coming for you. Homies know how we're in your presence because we love you. We love we love you. We love you. We love you desperately. We love you. Oh, we need you. We need you. We need you. We need you. Your daughter needs you, Nolia. We need you. We need you right now. Strengthen her where she is. Uh, push up on her. Even get closer to her. Hold her. Hold her. Hold her. She's hurting right now. Uh, her daughter and her son, her remaining daughter and son, strengthen them even too. You right now, be merciful, y'all. We need you desperately. They need you desperately. We want, we want to be saved. We, we bow down to you. We, we accept you as not only our Savior, our, our, our Messiah, our Mashiach, but also our Master, our, our, our Adonai, our, 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 our Malek of Maleks, Adonai of Adonai, King. You're the King of Kings and what they call the Lord of Lord. Hallelujah. We need you desperately. Help us. Save us. Forgive us for our sins, even as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And we'll be careful to give you the praise and the honor, not only now, but forever. In the matchless name, Yahushua, we humbly pray. Hallelujah. 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 And I'm on. Thank you for posting that, uh, Logan. I love y'all. I love y'all. Let's continue to strive in him. I'll keep uh, Anolia in, in your prayers, and her and her family. Uh, yeah, keep them, keep them in your prayers. Yeah, they they hurting for certain. Yeah, let's pray for them. Is that all right, y'all? I, I love y'all. Th thanks for hanging out. Uh, you know, uh, Spirit Walk Part Ten, uh, and, and I pray we're, we're growing. I'm not sure if the Most High is gonna stop this uh, 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 series on this one or not. I kind of feel like it could be. Of the last one, but we'll see. But um, I pray all y'all learned, got something out of it. I definitely tell you that. I pray everybody was edified in this series, if it is the last one, but we'll see. Uh, what's today? Thursday? Yeah, we'll see uh, tomorrow morning, y'all permit. Noonday prayer, y'all, and prayer tonight at 8 p.m. There's prayer. We need prayer desperately. 302, 202, 1102. It's just an 815648. That's for noonday prayer. That's for uh, prayer tonight at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And that's for right now if you want to give commentary on the lesson or and pray with us right now. Thanks for hanging out. Y'all be Baruch and Brock and Shalom.